welcome back to Block TV. Last I checked, I'm still a Yaella V. There you go. And it's time for Block Doc, where we are graced with the presence of Dr. Lionel Mulberger, co-founder of the startup Platin, and no one is better versed in blockchain than the good Doc. It has been a week that we are been that we have been diving deeply into 51% attacks. Dear Doc, explain to me why. Because 51% uh, attack happened to Ethereum Classic. It's interesting that Ethereum Classic forked off of Ethereum because they disagreed with what they were doing right. there. They didn't want to change things. They wanted to stick to their ETH hash. And ETH hash became the focus of a 51% attack. And it's a chance for us to really take a moment and understand what does that really mean. What does it really mean? So uh, if you think of a blockchain right. like these dominoes is one block. And this block might say, I give Yael a coin. And then this block says, Yael gives uh, Bernie a coin. And this, the blocks keep going in order. And what keeps them in order is some kind of hashing. So uh, the Ethereum Classic chain uses ETH hash, which is a hashing process that you do on G. GPUs, okay. and we we'll, might get back to that later. So uh, a 51% attack means that somebody's changing the order of the blocks. And what, uh, how is that helpful if you change the order of the blocks? So like if you ever go into a nightclub, you know, you pay, mm -hmm. and then when you pay, they give you the, right. Either that or the stamp, yeah. Right. So the order is kind of important. You pay, and then you and get then the you stamp. Get, yeah. Let's say here you pay, here you get the stamp. Now, if I could change the order, what if I do this, and then just take this one out? Now you're not paying and you got the stamp. But you got the stamp. Right. Mm. So that's basically what they did. So there was an order of blocks where people had said, here, I give you the exchange. I give you $100. Exchange, you give me tokens. I give you $1,000. Exchange, you give me tokens. I give you $1,000. Exchange, you give me tokens. So these they took out. That's so an now the, the, right. So now yeah. the chain said, exchange, you give me tokens. Thank you. Exchange, you give me tokens. Thank you. So if you have the ability to change the order or to remove a block from the middle of a chain, you can change the history of the chain. And in the end, you can change who got money. And $1.1 million went the wrong way because of this 51% attack. OK. And when something like that happens, the 51, what does it do to the entire chain? Oh, well, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> given that the blocks are like this, if you can somehow ruin, do you destroy the whole chain? Does that happen? So actually, no. OK. What, ha what does happen? If, if you go to the extent of destroying the entire chain, then you've actually destroyed the money that you want. See, now nobody can read the chain. Right. Right. And what I want to do is do enough damage, a little bit of damage so that I can get some money. And by the way, this million dollars is 1% of the total money flowing in that chain. So if you think about that, it's, it's some money, but it's not a lot. So the point is that uh, an attacker depends on the overall health of the chain. So he doesn't want to destroy the entire chain. He just wants to reorder things. And in this case, he was able to do that because the proof of work was not that hard. How hard is it? Oh, OK, the proof of work wasn't that hard. But how hard is it to, just, to do this, to attack a chain? All right. So uh, different chains have different methods of right. putting these blocks in order. And it generally relies on a hash. And I think we, uh, we gave so, the um, control room an example of hashing. I'd like okay. to do a Let's close take, look What at does that. hashing mean? So uh, the, on the blockchain, it's very technical what's written there, but we can simplify it and just say uh, uh, Yael gives the block doc one coin. So are yeah. we seeing that? OK. I think so. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so um, when you make a hash of that, you actually uh, encode it into um, some kind of other letters and numbers. Now, if you want to change the order, you have to figure out that new encoding, that new hashing. And depending on the protocol, that can be very difficult. On ETH, on Ethereum Classic, they're using ETH hash and uh, GPUs, which you can buy a lot of GPUs and you can um, do the attack. If they were on Ethereum, they would be using ASICs, and there it's much harder to do. It's much harder to do, no, but, but it's much harder to do, but asking that, you know, looking at that, can anybody do this? Can any computer do this? Can anybody basically say, okay, I'm going on an attack. I'm about to, you know. So that's, it's, it's, it's a great question because the, if, if you. If I decide that tomorrow, for example. If you decided okay. tomorrow yeah. and you could just roll up to the local electronic store. I was about to say. And fill up your car with GPUs, then you'd have a chance of cracking any GPU based system. But Bitcoin, to some controversy, doesn't use GPUs. It uses ASICs. And this is where things get pretty interesting, Yale. 
Uh, when Vitalik... Bitcoin has never been under an attack, right? Well, they've tried, but no. There no, has been no 51% really, no, no attack. No, no 51% on Bitcoin. No. Okay, yeah. Uh, and, but there's a price for that. There's a tremendous amount of energy that goes into all those ASICs. They, they compare it to the size of countries, the, the amount of energy of Denmark. or So um, if you wanted to attack Bitcoin and do this reordering, yeah. you, uh, you basically wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to. No. But when it comes to others, let's say, you know, when it comes to, um, uh, you know, dedicate, when it comes to other attacks, can I attack Ethereum? I mean, is it easy? Who would do that and how easy is it to do that? So Ethereum is, uh, is based on ETH hash and a GPU attack could get them. And the GPU based attacks, we all need to be concerned about them in the blockchain world because any blockchain that works on GPUs, like if you were a concentrated attacker, you could work today on one. Uh -huh. And because you have all these GPUs, tomorrow you could focus on another and attack that one. So the GPU based aspect of um, hashing the blocks gives you an ability to keep attacking different people. It's like a multi-purpose weapon. Wow. Bitcoin is protected from that. And um, Ethereum knows about this problem and they're moving to a different model called proof of stake. Okay, explain it, to me, how will, how will that solve this danger? So in proof of stake, when they, let's say somebody actually did some foolishness like right. this, then, um, then they would be losing their stake. So they're actually expressing their belief in the blockchain by putting up their own money. So that money would be confiscated or they would lose that. And theoretically, that should prevent these challenges. But it is still theory. They've been working, the Ethereum community is working on proof of stake for a long time. They were supposed to have released it in this release, but now it's delayed. And so we're still waiting. They're testing it. So we don't really know yet what attacks of proof of stake will look like. I want to go back, though, to the ability to attack um, uh, computers. And, you know, to get that ability to get to 51, that's a lot of energy. It's almost like a, as, as much as is needed to mine, whatnot. A lot of energy is needed, correct? Tremendous amounts of energy. And the, the amount of energy today in the Bitcoin network, to, 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 to the criticism of it, is it's an enormous amount of energy. And you know, there are people, you know, there was this whole mass calculated, one can argue, I'm saying, that campaign in mainstream media a few months ago about how, you know, Bitcoin will destroy the energy, you know, green energy, will destroy the you know, the planet, which is not the case, right? Although it does require a lot of energy. Yeah, and I think as, as a society, we need to decide what's worth expending energy and what's not. I mean, if you can look at racing, for example, it takes a tremendous amount of energy. It, there's a billion dollars a year go into uh, Formula One racing, and that's just one right. uh, racing event. And those cars use in one two-hour race, uh, the whole race uses as much as an ordinary car uses in a year. So uh, I think as a society, we have a limited amount of energy. We need to make decisions. And not only that, I mean, I'm sorry for raising it and, and, and pivoting to the side, but also if we all move to green energy, won't that solve everything? Yeah, and you know, Bitcoin drives that. You know, these it's just like Apple did. I think Apple a few uh, years ago moved to green energy. All their farming, their server farms are, you know, I'm not sure all, pounds. but yeah, well, Google, a lot of Google them. makes Google a big effort thing. to be exactly. next to hydro uh, created energy. And Bitcoin is driving similar innovations. There are solar farms now, people putting uh, Bitcoin miners near solar farms and near hydro generation. So that could solve that proof of stake. Back to proof of stake. Ethereum is moving to proof of stake. Yes. Um, and we're looking forward to that. And we're looking forward to How can we protect ourselves, is my question. Well, <laughs> the one reason why this attack succeeded was because those exchanges gave that money away. They didn't wait for the blockchain to get a little bit longer. The longer the chain, the more difficult it is to fake it. Patience again. Patience would That's have everything helped. Everything in life, okay. <laughs> so they waited 100 blocks, but in that chain, each block takes 15 seconds. So that was not a whole lot of time. Right. Now, one reason why people are excited about cryptocurrency is because it removes the friction around it. And, uh, oh, by the way, I see now, is that up on the screen to our viewers? Yes. So I wrote here on the blockchain, Yael Lavi transfers to BlockDoc the following coins. One, two, now you'll notice when I change one number, right. the, the gobbledygook at the bottom changes tremendously. <laughs> you see? So yeah, that, yeah, that's what a hash looks like. And 
Uh, you can do this online. This is an online tool. You can play with it yourself. This is the cryptographic magic at the heart of blockchain. That a sentence, if I change one character, if I change the one to a two, look what happens. Six E blah, 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 ending in one becomes CC ending in D. Entirely different. All of the letters change. So this is called a one-way function. And this is SHA-256, which is what is uh, the heart of Bitcoin. The attack that happened here was a different hashing function that's not quite as secure. Not quite as secure. So it's kind of worth the fight. It's worth the more effort you put in. So the question you ask, is it worth the effort? Is it, is it worth it to all of us to put yeah. the energy of Denmark into this system? Is that's it? a question for think? us to decide. I think the jury's out. I think that Bitcoin is new and young, so right now it might be wasteful, but it will improve with time. Automobiles were incredibly wasteful of, uh, of energy when they were first born, and they're getting uh, more and more efficient. In fact, I mentioned racing. In racing, yeah. the uh, Formula One teams, are they have been criticized for using all that energy, and now they are 45% efficient. So a car like you're seeing on the screen now it uses about uh, 100 uh, kilograms for a race of, of fuel, Right. It used to get, it used to transfer only about a fifth of that into motion, and now it can transfer almost half. Formula One cars are saying they're getting up to 45% efficiency, which is really good. No, no, which is really good. And, and I'm, I'm sorry for, you know, harping my point back home. Uh, I think when it comes to mining or hashing or getting any kind of um, uh, server, computer, um, power. Move to green energy, people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have 7 billion people today. We're, it seems that we're going to peak out at 11 billion people. We have to have enough energy for everybody, for everybody and indeed. leave the water clean enough to drink and leave the land clean enough for our families. And survive 51% attack. I want to thank you very much. Sure. I'm a good doctor. You know, if we're fighting for our 51%, um, uh, we might even listen to a little song that reminds everybody what it means to fight. No song, never mind that. Uh, but good doctor, thank you so much for that. That was um, uh, for us with Block Doc today. Don't forget to check us out on Block TV. Every single social network you have, we're on it. Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, um, and we'll be right back. <laughs>